How do you change fan speed on a variable speed air handler made by York? What fan speed do you need? What's the minimum fan speed? What should you know? Today we're going to be looking at an installation manual and we're going to be looking at a variable speed air handler. I'm going to be going in depth on setting up the delay, setting the right fan speed, and what you should know. Hope you're ready to learn. Hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. And today we're going to learn how to change fan speeds on a variable speed air handler and we're going to learn the why. Let's go. Here is an installation manual for a variable speed York air handler that we're going to be adjusting the fan speed on today. And I'm going to show you a few tables, a few sections in this manual that are super important when you're commissioning this type of equipment. And if you don't set up the airflow settings correctly, then you're going to lack in performance and efficiency. So I'm going to show you what's super important. And we're going to start by looking at uh, page 14, which is airflow and comfort setting selection. So let's skip forward here to where we go to page 14. This is page 10, so we need to scroll on down. We're going to stop right here. Page 14 it says right here, we're going to zoom in so you can see it. It says incorrect airflow and comfort settings may result in decreased system efficiency and performance. So I'm not just making this up. We're going to look at setting the cooling airflow in the video. But I want to talk to you about what I did with, with the delay tap. So under delay tap, you've got four selections. you got A, B, C, or D. And each one represents a different comfort setting. And what I do for being down south where it is humid, I do the humid comfort setting by putting the, the delay tap on B. And what happens is you can read right here you can actually pause the video or you can listen to me read it if you select B uh, it says the humid setting is best suited for installations where the humidity is frequently very high during cooling season such as in the southern part of the country and that's where I'm at Tennessee so on a cool on a call for cooling the blower will ramp up to 50% of full capacity so instead of blowing 100% whenever it gets a call for cooling, the indoor fan is only going to blow 50% of full capacity. So if full capacity is 1200 CFM or 1600, it's going to be half. And that's going to stay that way for two minutes. Then after two minutes, it will ramp up to 82% of full capacity and will stay there for five minutes. Then it will ramp up to full capacity where it will stay until the wall thermostat is satisfied. So for the first seven minutes, that fan speed is a little bit lower in capacity. And what is that going to do? That's going to drench that coil. That is going to allow for a, uh, a larger temp split. And it's going to have a much cooler air. So the first seven minutes, you're really going to dehumidify a lot better than if you would if you were at a full capacity for that fan speed. Now, the second thing I want you to look at, which is super important, we're going to take into consideration the model number that we're working with. We're working with the 48C. You see that 48C? Now I want you to look over here where it says minimum fan speed. You see that? Table 8, electrical heat minimum fan speed. What you're going to do is you're going to look at your model of your heater kit. Okay. Now let's say we went with the uh, 6HK uh, 9.6 kilowatt. You can see that 9.6 kilowatt. So say we went with this 9.6 kilowatt, we want to line it up with our 48C. It says medium low tap D, okay? So that means that the heating uh, fan speed should be set to D, okay? So that's the minimum. And if you don't read this part of the installation manual, then you're likely going to set the heating speed for a, a different setting than what the minimum is, you know, requirement is. So that's something I want to show you as well. Now, let's move on down here. And we're going to look at a different table. First, we're going to look right here at table 15. You see where it says heat tap? Okay, we should have it on D, right? But what I want to show you is if you scroll over to AVC48C right here, you see this? 
You see how the top numbers are higher than the bottom numbers? It starts at 1650 and then goes to 1550 and 1375 and then 1150. If we scroll over, tap A is going to be the highest speed, right? Tap B is going to be lower than tap A. So if you go from tap A to B and then tap B to C and then tap C to D, you're going to be lowering the fan speed. And that's going to be the same for cooling, right? Now, we can go right here to table 15 up here, and we can find our model number of our unit, AVC48C. And you can see how if it's on tap A, it's 1760 for high speed, right? And then for tap B, it's 1540. And you can see how in this video, I show you that whenever I change from tap A to B and tap B to C, my fan speed gets lower and lower. And this chart right here will tell you if you combine the adjust tap B with the cool tap A, this is what it's going to be for high and low speed. This is great information for you. Something you can do to even make it better is you can actually use a magnahelic and you can check the supply air static, the return air static, and then you can get your total external static of your duct. One last really good piece of information that I have to tell you is this right here. It says these variable speed air handlers are designed to deliver constant airflow regardless of the external static pressure, the ESP, in the ductwork. Therefore, if too many supply registers are closed or a filter becomes clogged or there's a restriction in the ductwork, the motor will automatically operate at a higher speed to compensate for the higher external static pressure. And this may result in a higher operating sound level and a motor damage. And this is why it's so important for you to set the airflow correctly. Because you can see right there what happens when you have a filter that's dirty. That motor ramps up. So make sure you set your speeds correctly. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the rest of the video. 71. It's 71 degrees in this house. Supply vent is blowing 54 degree air. That's not 20 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check airflow because I can hear these vents. I can hear it. Hear that? They're rocking. Let's check this one. Whoo! Thousand feet per minute. I bet all these vents are blowing that hard. I'm going to leave this right here. We're going to do something. Four ton unit. How do we know? 48. Oh, okay. Variable speed. Man, you can hear that thing. All right, so we're going to take this off. We need to lower our fan speed. Then check that temperature split. So we can use the cool or the adjust and we can also add a delay for a humid climate okay we're gonna put this on B all right now I'm gonna to go to cooling put this on B Ooh, hear that fan speed just lowered okay very good now let's check the temperature split leaving it in the same spot Ooh, look at that. Oh, look at that. No more thousand, right? Well, just hit a thousand. But it wasn't saying 800 before. It was saying 900. Now, let's check the temperature split. Still 71 in the house. Just turned the dual induct psychrometer on. And it says 53. We just lowered it one degree. Now, let's make some more magic. Let's go lower that speed again. Okay, put that panel out of the way. Take this, it was on A, I put it on B. Now we're gonna put it on C. Oh, it lowered it more. Now let's go check it. Okay, let's check it out. Same place. Oh, I don't remember seeing the 700. That's more like it. 
Now let's check the temperature split. It's 70 degrees in this house. All right, turned on the field piece SD P2. 51, we just dropped it two more degrees. It looks like it's still going down. Now we've got a 19 degree split and it's still going down. So we probably got more like a 20 degree split. Now this vent isn't roaring anymore. Measuring feet per minute on the return grill. Earlier I was reading around 470, 500. Now in the same spot, I'm reading around 300. So that's more like it. 70 degrees in the home still. 49 degrees coming out of the supply vent. That means that we have a 20 degree, 21 degree split. Airflow on this vent is great. No longer have that loud sound. Go back to the beginning of the video when I held you down here and let you hear that sound. And now hear the difference, wow. Hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. Definitely leave a comment if you got a question. If you don't have a question, let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. Thank you so much for watching. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.